sutra. Ananda, the internal aspect, refers to what occurs inside living beings. Because of love and defilement, they produce the falseness of emotions. When these emotions accumulate without cease, they can create the fluids of love. Commentary: Ananda, the internal aspect, refers to what occurs inside living beings. This means within the physical body. What is within the physical body? Because of love and defilement, they produce the falseness of emotions. There is love and desire and defied dramas. From the love and defilement, false emotions come up. These emotions accumulate without cease. The emotions pile up day by day, month after month. They become abundant and do not stop. The emotions of love are ever present. They can create the fluids of love. Sutra. That is why living beings' mouths water when they think about delicious food. When they think about a deceased person, either with fondness or with anger, tears will flow from their eyes. When they are greedy for wealth and jewels, a current of lust will course through their hearts. When confronted with a smooth and supple body, the minds become attached to lustful conduct, and from both male and female organs will come spontaneous secretions. Commentary: That is why living beings' mouths water when they think about delicious food. Why is it said that once living beings have love and defilement, they become they develop emotions which eventually, if not stopped, will produce a fluid of love? Some examples will substantiate substantiate this. Just thinking about eating some delicacy makes people salivate. It happens because of their gluttonous thought. When they think about a deceased person, a friend, or close relative, someone with whom they had the most affinities, either with fondness or with anger, tears will flow from their eyes. The person who has died was so close to them that they give rise to anger, resentment, or even rage, and think he was so fine. Why did he have to die so soon? Things were so good between us. Why him? Excessively fond regard or tremendous resentment both cause a person to cry. When they are greedy for wealth, Andrews, a current of lust will will cause through their hearts. The dream about getting rich and in their hearts a flow of lust is stirred. When confronted with a smooth and supple body, their minds become attached. To lost form conduct, and from both the male and female organs will come spontaneous secretions. When they see a particular attractive person, they have thoughts of sexual desire. With that, the essence flows of itself. Strange, isn't it? Sutra Ananda. Although the kinds of love differ, their flow and oppression is the same. With this moisture, one cannot ascend, but will naturally fall. This is called the internal aspect. Commentary: Ananda. Although the kinds of love differ, although there are various kinds of love, their flow and oppression is the same. Their currents and enticements are the same. With this moisture, one cannot ascend, but will naturally fall. Emotion sends one down. This is called the internal aspect. Sutra, Ananda. The external aspect refers to what happens outside living beings. Because of longing and yearning, they invent the fallacy of discursive thought. When this reasoning accumulates without cease, it can create ascending vapors. Commentary: Ananda, the external aspect, refers to what happens outside living beings. 
Because of longing and yearning, they invent the fallacy of the discursive thought. The longing and yearning also refer to love. The discursive thought is in fact a false thought which accumulates. When this reasoning accumulates without cease, it can create ascending vapors. You think of it from all angles. You think about it today and you continue thinking about it tomorrow. You thought about it during your last life. You're thinking about it in this life. You thought about it in former compass and you think about it now in this compass. No one knows how long you've been thinking and you never rest. However, from this continual thinking, a special response can occur which is an uplifting ascending motion of spirit. Sutra, that is why, when living beings uphold the prohibitive precepts in their minds, their bodies will be buoyant and feel light and clear. When they uphold mantra seals in their minds, they will command a heroic and resolute perspective. When they have the desire in their minds, to be born in their heavens, in their dreams, they will have thoughts of flying and ascending when they cherish the Buddha lands in their minds. Then the sagely realms will appear in a shimmering vision and they will serve the good and wise advisors with little thought for their own lives. Commentary, that is why when living beings uphold the prohibitive precepts in their minds, The bodies will be buoyant and feel light and clear. This can happen to any living being. Prohibitive refers to things which one cannot do. These precepts keep people from doing bad things, from creating evil. Don't do the things you should not do and then you are upholding the precepts in your mind. If your mind holds the precepts, Then your body will experience a sensation of lightness. You feel almost like you're floating when you walk, and your mind will be extremely pure and clean. When they uphold mantra seals in their minds, they will command a heroic and resolute perspective. If you realize in holding the mantras and in your mind, there are many mantras and this refers to any one of them. You will have a response. The seal refers to the mind, to mind seal as it pertains to mantras. When you recite the mantra, a certain response occurs. If you are a specialist in mantras, you will have a heroic air about you when you gaze around. Your glance will be powerful and determined. And determined, you will know no fear when they have the desire in their minds to be born in their heavens. In their dreams, they will have thoughts of flying and ascending. And ascending. In your dreams, you will be able to fly and to soar into empty space. That's all because you want to go to the heavens. When they cherish the Buddha lands in their minds, When the sagely realms will appear in a shimmering vision and they will serve the good and wise advisors with little thought for their own lives. If you'd like to get born in the land of ultimate bliss or some other Buddha land, then the Western Pure Land will secretly appear with its pools of seven jewels and waters of the eight meritorious virtues, with its white cranes great perils and calavin carpers and with a myriad other states. It won't be something others can see, but you will see it. Others will be unable, uh, unaware of it, but you will know. You will be able to see them, the eastern crystal world of medicine master Buddha as well. You will get to serve these good and wise advisors. You can draw near to them, respect them, and make offerings to them, and you will have a total disregard for your former lifestyle. You, your very life itself will seem unimportant when faced with this opportunity to serve 
and draw near those good and wise advisors. Nothing you might do will seem as important to you as serving these sages. Sutra Ananda Although the thought varies, the likeness and uplifting is the same with flight and ascension, one will not think but will naturally become transcendent. This is called the external aspect. Commentary Ananda Although the thought varies, the likeness and uplifting is the same. Although the things one thinks about are different, the comfort and light is that one attains the feeling of floating is the same. With light and ascension, one will not sink but will naturally become transcendent. With this upward movement, one will not fall downward. Transcendent means rising above everything, surpassing all. This is called the external aspect. Sutra Ananda All beings in the world are caught up in the continuity of birth and death. Birth happens because of their habitual tendencies. Death comes through flow and change. When they are on the verge of dying, but when the final warmth has not left their bodies, all the good and evil they have done in their life suddenly and simultaneously manifest. They appearance the intermingling of two birds, of two habits, an abhorrence, abhorrence of death and an attraction to life. Commentary The Buddha calls again, Ananda. Do you know that all beings in the world are caught up in the continuity of birth and death? They get born and die, die and get reborn, up and again in a never-ending cycle. They spin on the wheel of the six paths of rebirth. Birth happens because of their habitual tendencies. Birth is something living beings want. They tend toward it. Death comes through flow and change. When they die, they follow their karmic retribution to turn again in rebirth. According to the kind of karma they have created, they will revolve on the will when they are on the verge of dying. But when the final warmth has not left their bodies, all the good and evil they have done in that life suddenly and simultaneously manifests. The final warmth has not left their bodies means that the six consciousnesses and the seventh consciousness have passed out of the body, but the eighth consciousness still remains. Its passage will be marked by warmth that is the place for the body where the eight consciousness lives will be warm to the touch. For instance, if the eight consciousness leaves through the soles of the feet, that spot will be warm. If it leaves from legs, the legs will be hot, will be warm. If it departs from the waist, the waist will be warm. If it goes out the top of the head, the top of the head will be warm. That's the final warmth that's mentioned here. In the text, before the eighth consciousness goes, it is referred to as the present skanda body. Once it leaves the body, it is the body between the skandhas or intermediate and skandhi body, skanda body. So the text here refers to the present skanda body before it has left the physical body. If one cultivates well, the skanda body is a Buddha. If one does not cultivate, it is a ghost. So, when people ask, where are there really ghosts? They must first ask themselves if they were Buddhas. If they know they are Buddhas, then of course they are ghosts as well. If you are not sure that they are Buddhas or ghosts, ask yourself if they are people. If you acknowledge the fact that they are people, they will know that they are also Buddhas and ghosts. 
because they are all different aspects of the same thing. After one dies, then the eighth consciousness is called me the intermediate skanda body. Before one dies, it is called the present skanda body. It is also known as the soul and, and as the Buddha nature. When a person is on the verge of death, the good and evil he or she has done is revealed and reckoning is at hand. Depending on one, what one did, one will have to undergo retribution or reward. If one did good, one can get rebirth in the heavens. If one did evil, one falls into the hells. If you did more in the way of good deeds and meritorious acts, and you can live from your head if you did more in the way of committing crimes and creating offenses then you live from your feet obviously then to live from the upper part of one's body means one will gain a higher rebirth whereas to live from the lower part means that one is going to have it an abhorrence of death and an attraction to life. They are repelled and attracted when confronted with death and birth. Sutra endowed solely with thought they would fly and can certainly be reborn in the heavens above. If they fly, from the heart and if they have blessings and wisdom as well as pure vows then their hearts will spontaneously open and they will see the buddhas of the ten directions and all their pure lands and they will be reborn in whichever one they wish commentary in doubt solely we thought means that the person has no distinction has no emotion, no yin, but has only reason, which belongs to yang. Solely means it is present of, to the exclusion of any other mental process. This is only thought, nothing else. It is a kind of true sincerity. People's thoughts are such that they govern what happens. For instance, Eating, drinking, and smoking all come about based on thought. First one thinks about it and then it one does it. Conversely, if one decides not to do something, that thing won't be done. If I want to eat something food, I go buy some good things to eat. If I want something nice to wear, I go buy it. The same is true for drinking. If one is thirsty, one goes out and gets some brandy, whish, whiskey, rum, or beer. Just mentioning it is enough to make some people's mouth water. People who like to smoke. People who like to smoke are always mulling over the best brands of cigarettes. They've always got their mind on these things. Then they meet a good and wise advisor who tells them to stop smoking, stop eating meat, and stop drinking. Obedient is shock. Obedient, they stop, but since their minds habitually run to the things, they start having dreams about smoking cigarettes, drinking liquor, and eating meat. They don't actually do these things in their waking hours. But because the thought remains, they dream of indulging in them at night. When they awaken, they regret their conduct in the dream. I all already stopped doing that. Why would I resort to eat? in a dream. They admonish themselves as, as I've told you before it's difficult to remain in a court of some of yourself 
when you're sick and even more difficult to do so in a dream. Endowed solely with thought, they will fly and can certainly be reborn in the heavens above. If they fly from the heart and if they have blessings and wisdom as well as the pure of house, then their hearts will spontaneously open. However, if one's thought is of the heart and one does not wish to be reborn in the heavens, but instead keeps blessings and wisdom in mind at all times, then even better to be born in the heavens. One may have made pure vows to be reborn in Buddha land. The Buddha is known as the Doughty, doubly complete one. That is, he is completed with both blessings and wisdom. Aware of this, one, one wants to cultivate blessings and wisdom oneself.